So uh, I'll get uh, back to Da Vinci before too long. Hopefully this comes out without that blasted glare on top. I'm just trying to see if I can get this. I sit back at the right angle. Turn it. Uh, what does it look like on the other side of my laptop? Oh, that's much worse. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Look like I'm, of course, maybe I should do that like I'm talking from on high. <laughs> How would I just uh, do the best I can here with the circumstances in which I find myself? I may not feel like recording this tomorrow, so. <laughs> You never know. Maybe the power goes out overnight. I mean, winter storms, who knows? Ice on the, who knows? Alrighty, so uh, this is uh, posting my buddies at the Hippie Commune. Um, I, I hope I accomplish a lot before I'm gone, but uh, I, I want the, like Hippie and Riff Raff and Meatwad and even Rist Real, yes. And Soup Fist, definitely. And Tempest. And uh, Talif. Um, I want you guys to uh, be like on the board of directors if y'all outlive me, which is, I'm assuming... Uh, many of you will. My four horsemen. And uh, several I haven't named. I, I'm sure I've, people I, I've left out you certainly have an input, a share uh, in the work and the rewards. Um, I don't know. Anyway, I'd like to start a charity that helps out children to learn art and music. I want to do that now. And I also want them to see some of the connections with science behind the art and the music. I want them to know about the wavelengths of light and sound that... Ah! I get him? No, oh, sorry. So, oh, there, oh, there. Ah, dead. Ah, dead. Ah, stone cold killer. That just happened. <laughs> so that was my intro. <laughs> Man, I think my hands are a little cold. Man, that hurt. <laughs> I got him, though. Die! <laughs> oh... Y'all didn't stop me from doing a team podcast, so this isn't entirely my own fault. <laughs> Y'all own some of this too. <laughs> oh yeah, give Slick Ninja some money, or her children, or uh, whatever, because she's going to get pissed off about spending my check. <laughs> like, find her. <laughs> and pay her first. <laughs> and record it. <laughs> All right, so. Yeah, start up a non-profit corporation for me, would you? If I don't get around to it. If I laugh so hard that I burst a blood vessel, all right? Just know that I went out laughing. Uh, I'm driving this boat. I'm the goat. Here we go. <laughs> How's this, Flippy? <laughs> oh, my God. What a hamsters have no tails. Really? So, uh, understand the wavelengths of uh, light and color and the, the wavelengths of sound that these subtleties that can turn harmonious, joyful noises into screeches and static and distortion. 
I want them to, uh, you know, let them know about these connections. You know, uh, 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 there's no wasted education. It all gets put in the bank somewhere. And even if they're not learning what you're teaching them, they're there and they're with the other kids looking to learn something. So maybe they learn something from each other that's way better than what the person that's running the class has to offer. Maybe they figure out something next level shit on their own. So that's what I'm after. And encourage that next level, oh my God, what did they say? That kind of stuff. Encourage that every time you see it, even if you don't understand it, even if you question where it comes from, all right? Give them enough freedom to explore it. Now, don't let them hurt each other to explore where this goes. <sighs> you know, live long and prosper. Uh, you know, I, I, want, I want this to be for real, you know, like uh, boys and girls home, but not, they don't live there. Unless that's like an absolute last choice refuge, like battered child syndrome or abused spouse, spouse and children. I hate to even bring it up, but I have to. And the children of orphans or partial orphans whose families or country... are arguing about the possession of this child's future rights as a juvenile. I want you to be able to offer one of those children shelter while the trial is going on and learn about my story and millions like us that there's a divorce, there's a dispute, the dispute ends, one of the parents dies, the dispute goes right back stronger than ever again. And kids wind up being bounced around from parent to grandparent to aunt to God knows where and God knows who and who knows what and nobody's got a background check on nobody. That's what they're arguing about in court, about who's functional and appropriate and oh my God. I probably smelled weed for the first time in my life when I was six years old because of the dispute after my father's death. While I was hanging out with some of my hippie uh, friends of my mom's uh, up in Kentucky. Yeah. Great stuff. That kid... I'm not saying there's anything wrong with people smoking pot, but maybe not around a six-year-old. I'm just saying. Maybe wait till that kid goes to bed. Have a bedtime for the kid. How about that? Try to have just a little bit of structure. Well... If you can't go to sleep right away, I understand. Just lay down in your bed and relax. You know, let them have a, me have a meditative time. No, there's no bad time. Just whatever, son. Grab the corner of the couch. Just, you know, watch out for lit cigarettes. Don't burn yourself. Yeah, like, uh, I burn myself on a lit cigarette. I didn't open the pack and light the cigarette. <laughs> I'm six years old. Yeah, those kids. Uh, this is the trauma I would like to try to prevent in the world that we supposedly control. All the money we spend, supposedly we have some input. Citizens United, whatever. Uh... Let's get some political willpower to not abuse our children when we're just deciding who's their legal guardian. I mean, let alone the ones that we're not even sure if they're citizens or not. I mean, could we have a little love for the people that supposedly love this child that are mistreating them while they argue amongst themselves? What a great idea. 
while you and Aunt Tessa and Uncle Betty are fighting it out in court and spending thousands and thousands of dollars that nobody can spare, paying lawyers that don't give a shit about any kid. They want paid. You're telling me that's a good system. How about we find a neutral ground? How about we have, you know, the ability of the court-appointed parent at the time of the hearing can stay here with the child and there's a little bit of supervision. Like the child's not getting coached day and night. Okay. All right. Are you smelling what I'm stepping in? So help me to help you help your grandchildren and great great grandchildren. Let's do something that outlives us and doesn't have weighty political, anti pro, whatever viewpoint, religion, creed, race. No, let's not have any affiliation with the any orientation, resonance, d divine intervention, whatever of the parents or would-be guardians or let's think about the one that's the minor that doesn't have an adult voice of their own coming out of their mouth. Some of them may be traumatized to the point that they can't even speak. And when they do speak, they don't know how to tell the truth because they've never heard it. I'm just saying, maybe we should concentrate on their well-being. If we want to claim to be high and mighty, Okay, let's say one, one case uh, that is bad and one case is good. And maybe the, the quote good case is not great, but it's not this. Here's what bad is. Bad is you wake up and you see people passed out with a needle in their arm. That's bad, okay? A child should not be seeing that shit. I need to say this out loud. Ever. Okay? You see somebody you love or one of their friends that mommy was talking to, you know, six hours before, and they're laying there, you can't tell if they're breathing, and they got a shank of steel in their arm from whatever they shot up with. Yeah. A kid remembers that. Yeah, it sticks. Shocker! That's the bad we need to avoid. Drug abuse. That's one. A home where there's a chance of anything that bad. The kid witnessing, you know, uh, a spouse, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, getting the crap beaten out of them by their significant other. Probably everything we know about humanity, you don't want to see that. During a formative, already stressful time, yeah. I'm not saying we have to take, I mean, we're, I'm talking a reasonable amount of time, a couple of weeks, like a family vacation, and have something there for the kids to do. Oh, for crying out loud, let them associate with some of the other kids that might not be having the best day. And yeah, you might have a scrap or two. You might wind up with a kid with a bloody nose. I'm sorry. They're kids. I mean, don't give them 
jackhammers and razor blades to play with, but let them have some damn Legos for crying out loud. I mean, <laughs> we have some coloring books. Well, yeah, okay, so some kids like coloring books. Great. Not every kid that's having, you know, an existential crisis go on around him or her can connect hand-eye coordination, emotional uh, disconnect long enough to get those skills to put the crayon to paper. So you need to have options for this child to passively meditate, take their mind off of the awful things that the adults are doing around them. And you need to have every kid, every time, in that situation, no matter what any of the parents or other associated entities. I mean, you know, sometimes Great Aunt Steffi might be the best choice. Yeah, she's never had children, not even sure if she even likes them. But she's a kind person and you know nobody's going to be shooting up in a shooting gallery at her place or beating the crap out of somebody. She's going to teach your child how to plant flowers in the garden and about puppies and kittens. <sighs> Something good's got to come out of that somewhere. Teach them how to draw on the sidewalk with chalk. I lay down there with them. Absolutely. You know... At least there's no abuse. I don't know if she's how therapeutic she is or how realistic she is about, you know, healing whatever's wrong. I don't know. But you know she's first doing no harm, harm reduction, harm prevention. So let's start there, can we? Maybe she's not a Rhodes Scholar. Who cares? I've seen some brilliant children come from stupid parents. I mean, <laughs> there can't be that much to it. I mean, I talk to them every day on the hippie commune. <laughs> I mean, some of the stories about, oh my God. Woo. <laughs> And Uncle Fester wasn't allowed in the local union hall ever again. <laughs> I mean, you can't make this shit up. <laughs> I mean, I'm not that smart to imagine something that stupid. <laughs> I can't mentally turn off enough switches in my brain to imagine stupid that bad. <laughs> That's how stupid that is. <laughs> like, <laughs> stupid is at least one brain cell above alive. Because if stupid was in control of all the brain cells... <laughs> then one of them would forget to breathe. <laughs> and they'd probably blow up because they forgot to shit. <laughs> Stupid! <laughs> ah! Oh, all right. So I got 25 minutes before 10 o'clock, uh, those of you who don't know, uh, I do live in a college town. There are actual rules and laws. Uh, there's noise ordinance, which not necessarily ever gets followed, but I'm going to try and follow it. Be a courteous neighbor. I do have actual students around me that uh, study. So, 10 o'clock is uh, the noise ordinance. 10 p.m., 6 a.m. People are supposed to be quiet so people can sleep and study late, you know, late or at night or through the night if need be. And that's like written in the bylaws at California University and endorsed by the borough. So, California borough. I mean, this is serious business. So, um, 
but I digress. I, uh, I hope we can just pass some of this along and help out kids, young adults. I would like to, I would like to sponsor partial scholarships anyway for, um, for people, uh, for college students studying developmental challenges and, uh, <clears throat> Those uh, formative and, I mean, arguably, those experiences like that gave me mental toughness that I'm like, you f you ain't even got it, Jack. <laughs> like, <laughs> you might whip my ass, but, my, you know, when I spit out my last tooth, I'm going to be like, piss on you. <laughs> you got nothing. You got nothing compared to my dad dying before I turned six years old. I remember and love him, and then the whole damn family explodes over a, a soul possession fight for this kid that, you know, six months ago, nobody seemed, as far as I could tell, to give a shit about me. And all of a sudden, they're fighting tooth and nail. I'm like, I haven't seen my mom in three years. <laughs> I'm not sure I could pick her out of a lineup. <laughs> you know, I'm like, hey, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I remember she was short. <laughs> but that, like, that, that, that information's written on the wall. <laughs> you know, it, I mean, I just like, it's like I woke up one day out of kindergarten and all of a sudden everybody's fighting over me. I'm like, you people are stupid. <laughs> what the? And I see, you know, I'm like, there's junkies passed out. And what the hell? What is that smell in here? <laughs> it's like a skunk puked up a honeycomb. <sighs> like this, I don't think this is normal. When I'm six, what the hell do I know? Yeah, those kids, I'd like you to, you know, give them a hand, would you? So that's a goal. I hope uh, stuff like this might help you uh, understand. This is the enrichment that I got. And I, I, I think I'm, I'm so lucky. Not for what I avoided, but for where I landed. I'm glad that I uh, made it far enough along in my own life that I was able to think about my grandmother's life in her entirety. You know, maybe it seems macabre, but you know, I, I could, I guess, I probably couldn't process that I, until after she'd been dead for over a year. I mean, um, really, before I could even start to process that, which you know. Some of you guys are like, dude, man, you're like beta maxing out on me, man. I don't know if I can take this. You're like, you went from big alpha burly male to like, you know, like, dude, it's like you're telling a crying in my beer sob story in Brooklyn or something, dude. I mean, snap out of it. <laughs> what happened to Porcelain Throne, man? Shit on that. So, uh, I come to a point where, um, you know, We've got a finite life, and we're not all as smart as Elon Musk, but I think uh, many of us have something to offer. Uh, you know, if we get down in here and work a little bit, you know, we might pull some of this off. Uh, you know, swing a few hammers and uh, build something. Feed some people. Feed their mind and body and, you know, the soul, if you believe in such a thing, but... So I'm going to read this out. Uh, hopefully it doesn't take me much longer, about seven or eight minutes. I doubt it's, it's probably three minutes. <clears throat> anyway, uh, so this is a post I put up on, uh, <laughs> get off my lawn. <laughs> it's one of the rants on the HCBPS, <laughs> the hippie commune bulletin board system. All right. I want to skin my ears back, lay it down, pick it up, and let her go. All right. 
I'm not going to promise I won't cry on this. I'll try not to scream too much. No, it's all heartfelt, real, man. I mean, I, I'm acting this out a little bit. Uh, all the world's a stage. Uh, I think I should do dramedy, comedy, drama, tragedy. And it's all actually the same story because it, it can be a beautiful thing. A beautiful arc of light through time and space. Someone's life and their experiences and the experiences that they get to hear about from uh, those around them that are uh, their progenitors and um, their own offspring and their co-patriot friends. They're uh, the people that uh, love and believe in this time and space that we're so fortunate to have. Uh, you know, we, we, all the vaccines and we've got everything that, you know, we've wiped out so many deadly diseases that used to kill people before they were, you know, self-aware. I mean, you know, babies and, you know, cholera, how many babies died because of cholera? You know, they're born, they're past a lot of the things that can go wrong in the first day of birth and. You know, and they're, they're starting to grow, and they're gaining weight, and they're moving, around, yeah, they're, you know, rolling over in the crib, and, <clears throat> and they get a couple of drops of contaminated water, and they are dead. Six-month-old, eight-month-old, year-old little babies. Maybe just learn how to crawl, and gone. For no good reason. I mean, it's just water. Pure water is all you need, and then they're gone. I mean, just that, let alone the fact that we can prevent people from dying when they're, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten years old from horrible diseases like measles and mumps and rubella and, oh, rabbit fever is horrible. My dad was doubled over and probably had, I mean, his giant of a man growth was probably stunted by a scratch. He had a scratch on his back when he was working on a tractor, uh, brush hogging a field. He moved a rabbit nest and got rabbit fever, fever uh, contamination on his hands. He didn't want to kill the baby rabbits, but there was disease there. He gets back up on the tractor, continues working, and transfers that somehow, and it got into the scratch, and he's out there sweating, you know. So who knows? So it... It doubled him over. Like he was a sick young man. I mean, deathly ill. High fever and doubled over, couldn't stand up, uh, couldn't eat anything, couldn't sleep. I mean, he was at death's door. <clears throat> and this used to be commonplace. I mean, this is not, you know, the, he didn't go into the emergency room and they're like, oh, we have a mystery illness. It didn't, you know, this is not the stuff that they do a Dateline movie about or, uh, uh, on a lifetime, you know, they, they don't, they don't, they don't make a movie about this rare occurrence. No, this happens all the time. I mean, you know, kids come in and they're just completely just wrecked. Their muscles all contorted and they can't stand up and they can't sit down. And they can't sleep and they, their whole body is seized up. They don't know if it's tetanus or it's <clears throat> rabbit fever. And I mean, Kids died of this. You hear about people, oh, I had to get a tetanus shot. Have you ever heard of anyone that you know dying of tetanus? You're like, oh, yeah, all those uh, vaccines are bullshit. No, they're not bullshit because you don't know anybody that's ever died of tetanus. Let me tell you, if you see something or somebody that dies of tetanus, you will never want to see that again. It is something ghoulish out of a demonic comic book, man. I mean, that is some wicked ass shit. Like, every muscle is fighting against itself. They've got a lot of the mental symptoms of rabies. Oh, my God. They can't talk. They basically just sit there and scream. They can't eat. They starve to death is one of the causes of death. It's not the tetanus itself. It's malnutrition. Oh, my God. Yeah, you don't know anybody like that. Because everybody gets a tetanus shot. Everybody, like all over the world, like if they, 
They're like, hey, you're a human being. You ever had a tetanus shot? And they find a, a way to say that in their own local language. And and they're like, well, I don't know. I'm not sure. Maybe. And I mean, before they finish the sentence, they're drawing a shot. I mean, everybody gets a tetanus shot because tetanus will kill you. And it's a horrible, awful death. You do not ever want to risk tetanus. Okay. This is the world we live in and have lived in for a couple of generations. We're so soft. We have no idea. I'm just keeping it real. I'm just running with no filters. Oh, no, you're not. Bullshit, man. You've been filtered to hell and gone back and forth, man. You have no idea how easy you have it. I worked with a lady that the, the first um, antiviral, uh, the uh, polio vaccine, sorry, uh, uh, like it is not it was not as foolproof as it is now and she was only about 12 years older than me this was 1990 uh see here 1995 <clears throat> she had polio as a kid and she walked with a, a limp where she'd lost use of a good large chunk of muscle on her right side, her glutes, uh, hamstring, and thigh, and calf, her foot was twisted. She was born with no malformations. Polio nailed her at like uh, 9 or 10 years old. And they thought they were going to have to go to the iron lung for a while because her lungs weren't working great. She's d accumulating fluid and mucus. I mean, this woman almost died of polio, and she was born in like 1960. Yeah, she wasn't even 62. Yeah, she's nine years older than me. She looked a dozen years older than me, easy, and this was when I was 24. Like, she was 33, I was 24, and she looked, you know, I'm just saying, she had to be. You know what I mean? Like on the being kind on the young end, <laughs> she's got to be 36. No way she's 33. No way. Like, there are little muscles that get paralyzed, atrophy, and die all over your body, even if you recover from polio and live a quote, normal life. You're body absorbs and uh, these dead muscle fibers <coughs> and we don't truly understand how polio works like how it destroys the body I mean this is amazing bad juju and that's in my lifetime She's still alive, I'm thinking. I haven't heard that she's passed away. She's, you know, not, like, she's not your great-grandmother's age. She's your grandmother's age or your mom's age, you know. I mean, she's, she's only 56 years old. And she's got this deformity from polio because the early vaccines were not as effective as they were by the 1970s that's what I'm saying I worked with her great lady that's the world we live in now you can say ah you don't know how tough I've had it no, alright okay I don't alright You walk with a limp from polio? I'm just saying. Get scar tissue on your spinal column from uh, rabbit fever? Because <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> My dad did, and God, was he tall. So I'm going to read this uh, post here. <laughs> 35 minutes in. <laughs> I'm just trying to get into character, all right? See, you know, a lot of people say, man, this is some weird stuff. You Have you ever seen an actor warm up? 
Some go dead quiet, and others go la 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 la. Deep breath, and they're on. Right. Some go total zen, like quiet. Mm -hmm. They got some tea, and then go out on stage. Others like, hello my honey, hello my baby, hello ragtime gal. I mean, before they get on stage. <laughs> so, all right. So I'm asking my brothers and sisters here on the Hippie Commune. My handle is Porcelain Throne, by the way, and there's a uh, kind of a psychedelic, my uh, icon, my avatar, yeah, whatever. My little picture under my name uh, is a scrunched up gif of uh, a tuna. And like I have like an impressionist edge on the front end where like the water is rippling as it comes in the gills so there's a before effect and after effect as the flow changes over the gills and you get cavitation in the water and the, the gills extract the oxygen as the water cavitates around the little micro fibers of the gills yeah so that causes some disturbance and the water actually kind of stacks up in front of the fish yeah science so that's the impressionism I have with, uh, that's what my portrait, my, uh, yeah, whatever, what do I call it? The gif under my name. Ah, ah, back in my day, we called them gifs. So, <laughs> <clears throat> this is me working some material out, all right? Be okay. All right, so uh, let's, uh, let's read this, shall we? Three. So, do you guys find anything in my videos remotely entertaining? Uh, please comment on my YT channel. Uh, I'll beg. Say anything. Uh, voice your concerns about my mental status. I'll kiss your wife's feet. If you don't have a wife... Just point me out to the next likely prospect. <laughs> if you're a husband and he's a husband, uh, I'll pick on hygienic basis. <laughs> Sorry, Eddie. Uh, Riff! Riff, Riff! <laughs> you're a fantastic artist, man. Don't ever stop. I, I believe that my writing's here. <laughs> Fourth wall break. Um, I believe that my writings here, uh, it should be and and not any, and my videos and pictures, snapped or painted, are the biggest uh, pork loin of my legacy, uh, portion of my legacy. I'm going to let you in on some of my brain's thoughts here as well for EMS. All right, so, uh, yeah, just little asides. I would hope some of my familiar influence... Uh, live past me uh, among you guys. Uh, not to be binary. Seriously, uh, shout out to Robin Ridley. Yeah. And perhaps uh, some of your children. For the time that I'm alive and among the land of the living. I hope my words uh, of comfort can reach every child that loses a parent. Like I did before age six. I, uh, I hope I can somehow soothe the ache of loss and depression of a parent that buries three children. Obviously, this is not the easiest thing I've ever done. So, bear with me. Sometimes the screen goes blurry. <laughs> you know me, I'm always cutting onions. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, uh, <clears throat> man, wow, such a dark place. And then, um, my grandmother, um, how did she stay out of an asylum? The toughest of lives. I know <laughs> that there, uh, there, there, there. Uh, there is all hope. Should be there, T-H-E-R-E. -E. I wrote it 
there. It's, uh, it's their wedding. Thankfully, I got the next sentence right. There is no false hope. Because according to this woman that raised me, the universe did not completely shit on her life. An outside observer might say that. Nope. There will be a day on the other side of the river where care is lighter than air. <clears throat> How does not some primal survival adrenaline instinct kick into, you know, fight, flight, or freeze? She mostly floated. Just... Above it all, um, secure on the defined, outlined certainty that all grief, worry, and spite, and fear will be lifted like a veil from your eyes. Only then does the power of the universe itself existence reveal. call that a uh, prop clutch <clears throat> she would occasionally stall out and crash <clears throat> but she always dragged herself up <clears throat> picked up all the pieces bound them up with duct tape to her hang glider and head into the wind off the cliff again Aiming for that thermal. She would take off. <laughs> that beautiful, crazy, crying, screaming, singing, harmonious angel of a woman that spent 90 years on this planet talking a lot about hope. How do you build that AI? Oh, that's superhuman. <clears throat> Might need a second. I'll tell you about my great grandmother here in a second. Let me uh, give me a second. Let me walk. Before, all right, all right. Sorry. Right. Woo, Lordy. Laying some truth down tonight. This is a Wednesday night prayer meeting, y'all. <laughs> Look at what you believe. Don't just hold it tight. Look at it. My favorite hobby. It's not breaking stuff. <clears throat> oh, there's the neighbors. They complaining. It's not 10 o'clock yet. All right, I'll quiet down. Back to my great grand. Ma Neely. So I'll be a little quieter. It's 10 again. I want to tell the sweet story of my dying great-grandmother she strolling up struggling up onto one elbow with a weak heart with a tumor with multiple spots multi-organ and spinal tumors likely tumors I should say. There were spots they just assumed on her wee elbow. On wee elbow? 
Oh, nice. On her wee elbow, <clears throat> she pointed me to say that all men are full of shit. <laughs> You're great, Pat. Fuller E. Neely. She likes snapped it like that. Too. You're great, Pat. Fuller E. Neely <laughs> was fuller than all of them. And you're just like it. <laughs> now she laughed when delivered some of this, right? So she and I both laughed in there a couple of times. I was 15. She was, I, I just don't recall. 82, 87. Uh, I just did. Some of the numbers run together, you know. Uh,. Was she 92? I just, you know, it's so long ago. And I, you know, there are so many other things I focused on remembering. I just can't remember her age right now. <clears throat> anyway. <laughs> so uh, that might have been important. She struggled up on her elbow. Line. So that might have been important. I want to start an archive of my stuff and encourage all of you. Uh, hippie common guys, obviously. My EMS buddies, you know. Uh, all you guys to contribute, uh, share. Not with be, uh, <clears throat> not with me. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, sure, I'm glad to be a part of it, but not with me. But your grandchildren that need to know that they are fuller of shit than anyone, <laughs> and not just for me, especially not just me. <laughs> This is my favorite sweater. What's up, Doc? <laughs> oh no, you don't want that. <laughs> oh. not want me to have the last <clears throat> do you want me to end the thread <clears throat> and have the definitive last historic word on the subject <laughs> that's why I was laughing so hard because I knew this sentence was coming up next <laughs> and some of the guys would have come here you'd be like be like Oh, ice cream bed, hells no, bitches. <laughs> one of us has got to stay in perfect shape just in case he's one of those one in ten million morbidly obese rednecks that have some mutated stupid wall gene <laughs> that just won't let their brain and heart settle the argument about who gonna quit first, pussy. Heart says, chicken, bark, bark. Your puny synapse got nothing on this raw animal pump muscle. Exclamation point, exclamation point. One, 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 eleven. <coughs> Ever, bitch. Can't even grab a holtz to love with all that chemistry. I'm just down here hustling, humping. Pimping and a pumping. Pumping, pimping, this love up to you, boss. Like Cool Hand Luke. Enjoy that oxygen, boss. I ain't even a contributor. Blah, 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 blah. Back and forth. Right. And somewhere that double, extra, stubborn, redneck, mystical shaman, hillbilly, backward, Indigenous, indigenous, Indian goddess, badass, steps out of the shrubs with her third grade education and says, and I quote, I'm going to live to 90 after five wars, three dead babies, valiant, baby, I mean, family betrayal, abuse, can no longer agree. Pseudo or whatever. Slavery. 
poverty, harassment, abuse. I dropped on my descendants. And I'm aware of all my faults acutely. <laughs> and she said, and I still preach hope until my last lucid sentence was stolen by dementia. Font size equals a billion equals hope. Maybe it sounds a little hokey. But to, to my understanding, in my world, where I, uh, how I was formed, when I was formed, and uh, the people I've met since and along this journey, this story uh, <clears throat> is as strong as my Angelou's Still I Rise. Same for me. And I know. Please, no disrespect to my Angelou and all her, her individual embodied work. I mean, just, oh my God. How is it possible? <clears throat> anyway, uh, I think this story is as strong as my Angelou's Still I Rise. I want it told. Um, even if you don't believe her delusion, particularly, uh, then just please tip your hat a bit to that believer in human beings enough that she wanted to know about her great grandson named Nolan after her husband she wanted us to tell her that story again <clears throat> about the man she loved and how she only hoped to see this person again one day and they would somehow anyway would be just fine they know each other even just a little bit is enough to hold on to that is hope and it is free <clears throat>